I discovered that one of my ball pythons laid a clutch of eggs. I removed her from the eggs so I could collect them and incubate them. Before collecting them, I used a piece of charcoal to mark the tops of all of the eggs. Now these eggs are all stuck together, so it's likely they won't roll during incubation. But just in case something happens and they do, I'll know which way is up. All of these eggs look absolutely perfect. They're big, they have a great color, and they're smooth. To incubate these eggs, the first thing I'm going to do is put them inside of an egg box. I use a mixture of perlite, vermiculite, and water to maintain a high level of humidity inside of the egg box. A high level of humidity is one of the keys to hatching these eggs successfully. The other key is to incubate them at the proper temperature. I like to incubate them at 89 degrees Fahrenheit or 31.6 degrees Celsius. I then use a small flashlight to candle the egg. Candling allows me to identify which eggs are fertile and how the embryo is developing. When I shake this egg, you could see the embryo jiggling. It looks like a bullseye. The little spot in the middle is what will develop into a baby snake. I'll cover up these eggs with some plastic wrap to hold in the humidity. And in about 55 to 60 days, we should see some new baby snakes. When one of my snakes lays a clutch of eggs, the first thing I need to do is collect the eggs and prepare them for incubation. Once the eggs are all set up in the incubator, I then like to focus on the mother. Her post-egg laying ritual first consists of a warm soak or rinse, and then I thoroughly clean her enclosure. In addition to successfully hatching the eggs, my other goal is to get her back up to a healthy weight. She put a lot of energy into building and carrying those eggs, and she hasn't taken a meal in months. And you could see here that she's looking pretty skinny. When I started pairing her last year, she weighed a little over 1,700 grams. I pair any of my female ball pythons until they are at least 1,500 grams. When I weighed her after laying eggs, she weighed in at 1,197 grams, which is not even a healthy breeding weight. So she lost over 500 grams while gravid. Now that she laid her eggs, I'll give her a day or two to rest and recover, and then I'll start offering her meals again. The first few meals will be smaller, but offered more frequently. And then I'll go back to her normal feeding schedule. And by the time her eggs hatch, I expect her to be back up to a healthy weight. These eggs have been incubating for 15 days now. Let's check up on it. The them. clutch looks good so far, but I see one thing that may cause an issue. It looks like one of the eggs is folding a little bit, and it's because the egg is stuck on top of the clutch with no support underneath. If I attempt to separate the eggs, I could risk tearing one, so instead I'm going to build it a little support. I'll build the support by stacking three pieces of egg crate on top of each other and then hot gluing it together. This will remove any stress from the sides of the eggs by supporting it underneath. This is going to be an amazing clutch. It even has the potential to create some some GHI Mojaves, which is always a favorite. After adding the third layer of egg crate, I let the support dry for a few minutes and then I put it into position. Ball python eggs are very hardy. So honestly, I think I could have left it as is and it wouldn't impact the egg. However, there's no harm in adding the support, but I think it will help prevent any significant creasing when the eggs really start to dent in as we get closer to them hatching. I quickly candled the eggs and they're all looking fantastic. I'm going to get these eggs back in the incubator, but we'll check up on them again soon. These ball python eggs are on day 22 of incubation, so they're almost at the halfway point. I'm really excited about this clutch because it has the potential to create some of my favorite combinations. Last week, we built a little support for this one egg because it started to bend slightly under its own weight. It looks like it's working. In fact, all of these eggs look really good. This is the mother of the clutch. She's an Enchi Pastel Mojave. And this is the father, who's a GHI Mojave. Both of these snakes are in shed right now. That's why their eyes are cloudy and their colors aren't very vibrant. Although I do like the ghostly appearance that this GHI Mojave gets when he's in shed. This pairing has the potential to produce 32 different color and pattern combinations, including blue-eyed leucistics and GHI Mojave, which are two of my favorite two gene combinations. For comparison, this is my female GHI Mojave who's not in shed right now. You can see the beautiful shades of browns and tans and her eyes are not cloudy. She's not big enough to breed yet, but hopefully in another year or so, she'll be ready. I'm going to get these eggs back in the incubator, but I'll keep you updated. These ball python eggs are on day 33 of incubation, so they're a little more than halfway done. You can see here that some of the eggs are starting to slightly dent in, which is not unusual for this stage of incubation. It's going to be very interesting to see what hatches out of this clutch. We have the potential to create blue-eyed Lucy's, GHI Mojave's, and a lot of other color and pattern combinations. You could actually see the snake's eye and head when we candled this egg. After looking over these eggs, I'm happy to say that they all look really good. As the baby snakes develop, the eggs will dent in even more, and between day 55 and day 60 we'll see them hatch. These ball python eggs are now on day 43 of incubation. So we only have to wait about two more weeks to see if we hatch any more blue-eyed Lucy. There's some condensation building up on the walls of the egg box, which means the humidity levels are good, but I don't want any of that water sitting on the egg, so I'm going to wipe it off. Overall, this clutch of eggs looks perfect, and I have a feeling it's going to be one of our most diverse clutches of ball pythons this year. We have to wait about two more weeks for them to hatch, but I'll keep you updated along the way. 
These eggs are on day 57 of incubation. Let's check up on them. A few weeks ago, we made a little support for one of the eggs in this clutch. The egg didn't have much support underneath it, and I didn't want to risk tearing the egg by removing it from the rest of the clutch. So I stacked three little squares of egg crate on top of each other to give it some support underneath. To be honest, I think the egg would have been fine without it, but it never hurts to give a little extra care. These eggs are now on day 57 of incubation, which means they're very close to hatching. In fact, they could be considered full term, so they could hatch at any moment now. As as you can see, the eggs are really starting to dent in, which is normal for this stage of incubation. I noticed a lot of condensation building up on the side of our egg box. I don't want the eggs getting wet, so I'm going to wipe it off. And then I'm going to candle these eggs one last time. In our last clutch of eggs, we hatched out two different morphs, the clown and the pastel clown. But this clutch has the potential to create 32 different color and pattern combinations, including GHI Mojaves and blue-eyed leucistics. So I'm really excited to see what hatches out, and we'll find out any time now. These ball python eggs are on day 61 of incubation. Two of them pipped on day 60, but it looks like the rest pipped today. Most of the snakes just have their heads poking out of the egg, which is normal, and in about a day or so, they'll crawl out. It looks like we did get a nice variety of color and patterns in this clutch, but we won't know for sure until they crawl out. But have a look at this little one. I absolutely love the dark and light contrast and the pattern on this snake. In a few days, when this snake sheds, we'll get a better idea of what the color is really going to look like. In order for the snake to have a good shed, I'm going to keep it on a damp paper towel for the next few days. This will ensure that the humidity remains nice and high so the snake will shed its skin all in one piece. Let's have a look at the rest of the babies. It looks like we hit one of our goals. We got one blue-eyed leucistic. The snake will be an all-white snake with blue eyes, but since it's a super Mojave, it'll have a little bit of a purplish tint to its head. We're also hoping for a GHI Mojave, but to find out if we got one, we'll have to wait for the babies to emerge from their eggs. I'm so excited for this clutch, but I'm going to get them back in the incubator and we'll check up on them again tomorrow. Take a look at these amazing babies that just hatched out. These ball pythons are on day 63 of incubation and they're all out of their eggs now. We hatched out some beautiful snakes and more importantly, they all look very healthy. There's a nice variety of colors and patterns. And that's part of the fun with hatching ball pythons. They come in so many different colors and patterns. And when you start breeding multiple different genes together, you never know which color and pattern combination you're going to get. It looks like we hatched out some pastel Mojave Enchies, which look absolutely amazing. And we also hatched out this beautiful blue-eyed leucistic, which is a super Mojave, so it'll have a little bit of purple on its head. And we also hatched two of these GHI Mojaves, which is one of my favorite two-gene combinations. I love the dark and light contrast that they have and those ghostly markings on their sides. As usual, now that all the babies are out, I'm going to keep them on this damp paper towel until they shed, which will usually happen in about five to seven days. The shed will also reveal their true colors, which will help us pin down what morph they actually are. I'm going to get these little ones back in the incubator, but we'll check up on them again soon. These ball pythons hatched about a week ago and they just had their first shed. Now that the snakes have shed, we could get a better idea of what the colors of the snake actually look like. This little one is one of my favorite in the clutch. And it's a little bit of a surprise because it looks like it's a pastel cinnamon GHI. And I wasn't expecting cinnamon to be in this clutch. But it's a nice surprise and all of these snakes came out beautiful. Now that the snakes have shed, I'm going to separate them into their own enclosures and offer them their first meal. We only ended up with one blue-eyed leucistic in this clutch, but it is a beauty. This blue-eyed Lucy is made up of two Mojave genes, so that's why it has a little bit of a purplish tint to its head. I'll do a separate video specifically on this snake in the near future. And our last two snakes are GHI Mojave. This combination is one of my favorite. However, you could see some difference between these two snakes. This one's dorsal stripe has a lot more hooks and holes in the pattern. The second one has a much cleaner pattern to it, and it may be due to that surprise cinnamon gene that we found. I'll continue to compare and contrast the snakes over the next few weeks while I get them established and ready for their new homes. Let's take a closer look at this blue-eyed leucistic ball python. A little over two months ago, I discovered this clutch of eggs. After pulling the eggs, I marked them and then I incubated them. After 60 days of incubation, the eggs began to hatch. And out of six eggs, we hatched one blue-eyed leucistic, which is an all-white snake with blue eyes. There's quite a few different combination of genes that could create blue-eyed leucistic. This one was created by combining two copies of the Mojave gene together. This combination will give the snake a little bit of a purplish color to its head and some purple eye stripes. I like to inspect my blue-eyed Lucy's under a black light because sometimes you could find some hidden markings. Because of the genes in the blue-eyed Lucy complex, it wipes out all other colors. So there may be some genes still in the mix, but we just can't see them. So sometimes under a black light, you could pick up some faint markings, but I'm not seeing anything here. If we really wanted to find out what genes are in this snake, we could do two different things. We could get it genetically tested, which can be expensive and tests aren't available for all the different morphs. Or we could breed it in the future and see what hatches out.
Is this snake a male or a female? Today I'll be identifying whether a few ball pythons are male or female. These ball pythons hatched a few weeks ago and they're all doing really well. After hatching, my primary goal is to ensure that all the snakes are healthy and get all the snakes eating consistently. All of these little ones are eating now, so I'm going to check whether they're male or female. For ball pythons, I use a technique called popping. I apply some gentle rolling pressure behind the snake's cloaca. And if I see two pink dots or tubes popping out, it's a male. So this little GHI Mojave is a male. Next up is this amazing blue-eyed leucistic. This little one is made up of two copies of the Mojave gene, so that's why it has a little bit of a purplish color tint to its head. As you can see here, this little one's hemipenes aren't quite as prominent as the last snake, but they are there, so this one is another male. And the last snake we have for today is another GHI Mojave. I absolutely love the way these snakes look, and it appears that this GHI Mojave is also a male. So overall in this clutch, we hatched five males and one female. And all of them are healthy and they look amazing. Is this little ball python a male or a female? Let's find out. A few weeks ago, these ball pythons hatched from their eggs. Then about five days later, they had their first ever shed. So far, all of the snakes have taken at least one meal, but it will be about another month before I'm comfortable with them and feel that they're fully established. But I am ready to find out if they're male or female. In order to do so, I'm going to use a technique called popping. When I apply some gentle rolling pressure behind the snake's cloaca, two little pink tubes emerge. Those are the snake's hemipenes. So this one is a male. If done properly, the technique is safe and it's pretty accurate, but it doesn't work on all snakes. Now let's see what this little one is. When I apply the technique, you can see that nothing pops out. It's just all white. So this one is a female. The technique does take some practice and you have to know what you're looking for. If the technique is not applied properly or the snake has very small hemipenes, it can be mistaken for a female. But that's not the case with this little one. This snake has some very prominent hemipenes, meaning it's definitely a male. I still have three more snakes to identify and we'll get to them soon. 